Hi, Redditors. I did a very bad thing. I did something I'm not proud of at all, but I did not go scot-free. Karma got me hard and brutal. Please, Redditors, I hope you all are ready as this might be a very judgmental journey. I'm ready to get judged, though. That's why I'm here on Reddit today. I spent the night with a random guy at the club I went to because my boyfriend was on a business trip. I know you're all wondering how random this guy is. I don't even know him. I just met him at the club, and then things happened. I never thought that messy and probably drunk mistake would come back to teach me a big fat lesson. My name is Phoebe, and I'm a 25-year-old nail tech from Los Angeles. I'm in a relationship with Scott, a 25-year-old video game developer. I met my boyfriend barely two years ago, and we just hit it off right away. When I say I met my boyfriend barely two years ago, I really mean it. We met at a club and just happened to have a good time. First of all, I didn't really think we'd end up in a relationship. Before I met Scott, I've hardly been in any serious relationships. I've just been all about having fun and doing crazy things. I'll say this because I want to be honest, I'm a very jovial and playful person. That's why I ventured into nail tech because I've always liked trying fun things and getting creative. Scott is just like me in that regard. He's a game developer, so he's creative and wild, just like me. I think that's how we connected and decided to see where our relationship takes us. Dating Scott has not been easy at all for many reasons. Our relationship has a lot of drama and it took a lot of work for us to get this far. Before Scott and I started dating officially, I literally had to battle with his crazy ex-girlfriend. Now, we sit down and joke about it, but it was not funny at all. Scott and his ex-girlfriend grew up together and they were very close. When I say they were very close, I really mean it. The name of his ex-girlfriend is Tara and she is also a game developer. Since Scott and Tara were practically inseparable when growing up, it was hard for her to give up on dating him. I literally had to endure her violent nature many times. I don't know how Scott and her started dating, but I do know that they dated for a very long time. My fellow Redditors, Tara was obsessed and still is obsessed with Scott. After I met Scott for the first time, we just had a fling for weeks. I had no idea that he had an estranged girlfriend. After weeks of casually meeting up, Scott asked me to be his girlfriend and I accepted. I know I might sound like a bitch saying this, but I never really thought Scott and I would date for more than a month. He looked like a playboy and I knew I was a playgirl. But we ended up dating for a few months. Doing all those months, I never encountered his ex-girlfriend. But as time went on, Tara became a thorn in my flesh. She would suddenly show up at his house and demand to see him while I was there. I did not appreciate any of those things at all, and I made sure Scott knew about it. My fellow Redditors, imagine an ex-girlfriend telling you to take your things and leave your own boyfriend's house. Anytime I came to stay for the weekend, it was almost like she had an informant who told her I was around. She would show up, then tell me to leave. I dealt with this for months before Scott was finally able to draw the boundaries. If you think that she was the only problem in our relationship, you're very wrong. I had a problem with Scott's mother too. Please, don't get me wrong. I'm not one of those girlfriends that want to cause a rift between a mother and son. In our case, it was Scott's mother that was desperately trying to cause a rift between me and him. Apparently, she wanted Scott and his ex-girlfriend back. Tara is her friend's daughter and they seem to have planned to get their children married. I even heard that Tara thought she would end up getting married to Scott so she was obviously not ready to accept our relationship. Everything was like a melodrama to me because I did not get why everyone seemed to think they had the right to impute their opinions into our relationship. Even though this would make me look bad, I never really thought Scott and I would have a serious relationship. So I assumed that Tara and Scott's mother were just being dramatic. But as fate would have it, I ended up failing in love with Scott. After almost one year of dating Scott, I realized that one of the reasons everyone seemed to care about who he dated was because he earned enough money. Maybe his mother was scared that he would start dating a woman that would control his finances. I never really cared about Scott's money because I earned enough money for myself. Now that I made the mistake of cheating on Scott, I'll tell you all this for free. His mother and his ex-girlfriend are basically having the time of their lives. They are enjoying my misery and they are beyond happy that I messed up. I think this mistake is something I'll end up regretting for the rest of my life. 
Many people were counting on me to ruin the relationship, and now I seem to have proven them right. Where do I even start from? Our relationship has been the best thing that has ever happened to me. For someone like me, who has never really been a fan of being with one person for a long time, Scott made me fall for him. My fellow Redditors, our relationship taught me a lot of lessons. I know that I have basically lost everything, and there is no possibility of us ever getting back together. But the best I can do for myself is look back and remember everything that happened. I don't think I'll ever find anyone better than Scott, so I still wonder what made me so stupid to do what I did to him. I can't believe I was stupid enough to cheat on Scott. So, let me tell you all the Redditors how my misery began. For almost throughout our relationship, Scott has gone on business trips many times. He's a game developer, so it's normal for him to go on several trips for work purposes. He usually stays for two weeks maximum before he gets back. Because I am really attached to him, those trips are very stressful for me. I miss him a lot and I get homesick. Yes, you read that right. I'm not the one traveling, but I'm the one that gets homesick. There are times when he has to call me every day or else I'd get upset. Apart from my attachment to him, those trips really give me anxiety because of the fear of his ex-girlfriend harassing me. These are not just imaginations of mine because it has happened many times. Tara is practically crazy and she would do anything to get back together with Scott. She has done a lot of crazy things in the past and I know that now that Scott and I are not together, she has an opportunity to shoot her shot again. There was one time, Scott traveled for a work trip and asked me to stay at his house with his sister. On the second day of the trip, Tara showed up at his house. She tried getting into the house even when I told that he was not around. Even if he was around, what rights does his ex-girlfriend have to barge into his house anytime she wants? Even though I messed up and she cheated, I can boldly say that Tara was a big problem in our relationship. No girlfriend wants to constantly battle with her boyfriend's ex-girlfriend. There should always be boundaries, but in my case, I had to literally fight for some sort of privacy. That very day when Tara barged into the house, I can swear that his mother knew about it. In fact, I feel like his mother was in on it. I mean, how else would she know that Scott was not home? My fellow Redditors, after that day, I became very paranoid and scared. I'm not trying to say I was scared as in terrified. That would be me overreacting. I'm just trying to say that I'm not used to my privacy being invaded, so it was hard for me to get used to Tara's unexpected visits. Hey, man. When Scott came back from the trip, I told him about Tara's visit. He was angry and assured me that he was going to speak to her. I think he spoke to her and maybe even threatened her because on his next trip, I got an unexpected visit from his mother. She warned me not to try and cause a rift between two friends that grew up together. Yes, she did that, my fellow Redditors. Sometimes I would sit down and imagine what being married to Scott would be like. Don't get it twisted. I love Scott very much. I just couldn't imagine myself being the daughter-in-law of a woman that hated me. I'm not really the type of person that likes stress, so if I didn't like Scott that much, I would not bother myself for trying to deal with people like that. But I was ready to endure it all because I like Scott a lot. Scott was also very loving and caring. She would bring me gifts, listen to me, visit me at my workplace, and there were times when he was the one to critique my new nail designs. I did not spend a lot of time together because of our contrasting work schedules, but we made proper use of the little time we have together. Apart from the issues we had with his ex-girlfriend and mother, I had a little bit of issues with my best friend. Yes, you read that right. All these factors are what make me more upset because it felt like the whole world did not want us to be together. Yet we found a way to stay together and I went on to ruin everything in just one night. Let me tell you all the problems I ended up having with my best friend concerning Scott. One day, I invited my best friend over for a sleepover at Scott's house. We were having a sleepover in my room. I didn't want to invite a lot of people because it wasn't my house, so I invited just Sarah, my best friend. Sarah ended up doing something that hurt me a lot. My fellow Redditors, while I took a shower and got ready in my room to watch a movie with Sarah, I asked her to go use the guest room to get ready so we could save some time. I did not expect Sarah to end up trying to seduce Scott. When I got out of the shower and got ready, I decided to go to the guest room and help her get ready. I got to the guest room but did not see her there. I decided to go look for her in case she might have missed her way. But, my dear Redditors, 
Sarah did not miss her way at all. In fact, she knew exactly where she wanted to go. When I searched the other rooms and did not see her, I decided to go tell Scott I could not find my best friend. Hey. It was very surprising to me when I got to Scott's room and found Sarah lying naked on the bed. Yes, you read that right. I actually found my best friend naked on my boyfriend's bed. At first I was furious because I thought that Scott cheated on me with her. I practically grabbed Sarah's hair and gave her the beating of her life. That betrayal really stung hard. The prospect of my own best friend, a girl that I invited to my boyfriend's house for a sleepover lying on his bed like a slut was really triggering. She was the same person that guilt tripped me and told me how heartbroken she was because I stopped spending a lot of time with her after having a boyfriend. I felt so guilty that I decided to have a sleepover with her so that we could spend time together. I never expected her to then try to seduce my boyfriend by stripping off her clothes and lying down on his bed. The betrayal and audacity made me very angry. It was at that time that I realized that her plan all along was to get access to Scott. I was foolish enough to help her by giving her exactly what she wanted. My fellow Redditors, you all needed to see how I furiously searched around the room looking for Scott because I thought that something actually happened between them. It turns out that Scott was not even in the house by that time. He went to get some snacks and drinks as a way of supporting our sleepover. To be honest, I'd never been more grateful for his absence in my life. I kept thinking of what would have happened if he had not gone out. It's not like I did not trust Scott, but temptation is real and no one really knows how well they can withstand it. Of course, the sleepover was instantly over and I practically chased Sarah out of the house. When Scott got back, I told him everything that had transpired and he was very surprised. It was from that very moment that I became very protective of Scott. I realized that we have more enemies than lovers of our relationship. I stopped speaking to Sarah from that day on, even though we worked at the same nail salon. The betrayal was just too deep and I found it hard to forgive her. Now that I'm recalling all these things that happened, I really believe that I'm the biggest fool alive. I went ahead to cheat on a man that I was practically lucky to have in my life. Now I know that I never truly deserved him. I know that women are lined up right now praying and wishing to be his girlfriend. I surely hope that no woman becomes as stupid as me. My fellow Redditors, if you think that those were the only temptations that happened in our relationship, you're wrong. Before I let you all know all that's been happening, let me tell you all how another phase of temptation began. During one of Scott's work trips, I almost ended up cheating on him with the gardener. Yes, you read that right. I don't even know how it came about or if the gardener even had ulterior motives, but it almost happened. I did not give in though. I tried my best to resist the temptation even though it was staring at me right in the face. It was a Saturday and the gardener came over to the house to work. I was swimmingly in the pool, oblivious to his presence. I even forgot that we had a gardener coming over every Saturday. I just stayed in the pool, lost in thought and swimming around. When I was tired, I decided to go inside. Because I thought I was the only one around, I didn't care to bring a towel when I came to the pool. So I didn't have any towel to wrap around me as I went back into the house. Imagine the level of surprise I felt when I caught the gardener looking at me. First of all, I was surprised to find the gardener there. I didn't even know that he was around. I was also shocked to see him staring at my body. It was at that moment I recalled that I didn't have a towel on me. I had to quickly run into the house and grab a towel. When you came outside to give the gardener the tools Scott usually kept in the storage, I found the gardener in a very awkward position. I don't know what he was doing or whether he thought I'd not catch him there. It was too weird, so I just gave him the tools and went back into the house. I did not come out till he left because the image of what he was doing before I gave him the tools was stuck on my head and I did not trust myself to know what I'd have done if I went back there. Ever since that day, the gardener and I have avoided each other as much as possible. I think he's embarrassed to have been caught doing what he was doing. I'm also embarrassed that the gardener saw me in my bikini, so I'm grateful for the much needed distance we've been giving each other. My fellow Redditors, do you understand the things that have been going on now? I was not in a long distance relationship, but it really felt like I was in one because of the constant work trips Scott took. I never imagined that one of those trips would lead me into cheating on Scott. This particular trip was one that was unexpected. It was Valentine's Day, and he promised me he'd be home on that day. 
I'm really a big fan of Valentine's Day and celebrating Valentine's Day. I just like the concept of celebrating with your partner and having a good time. So when Scott told me he'd be home for Valentine's Day, I was really happy. Two days before Valentine's Day, I went to the grocery store and made sure I did a lot of shopping. I wanted to cook something delicious for us to eat that day. I even got a new dress for myself so that I could wear it for dinner, and I also got Scott a new outfit. I was making preparations, cleaning up the house like we had guests, and I even went as far as making restaurant reservations for the day after. I want you to spoil Scott a little since he was not home all the time. The level of excitement I felt was literally extreme. My fellow Redditors, I was practically ready to go all out for Valentine's Day. The day before Valentine's Day, Scott was at work sorting some things out. So it was very surprising for me to get a call from him that same day, telling me that he could not make it back home and will be going on a trip for two weeks. I was really disappointed because I had already made a lot of plans. I asked him why he could not make it back home, and he told me that his boss suddenly asked him to cover up for a colleague of his. I have always respected Scott's work because it was something he earns from and something that he really loves. But on that particular day, I was very upset that he was literally standing me up. The fact that I could not even see him to tell him goodbye was infuriating. It was even more annoying that he only told me the day before, Valentine's Day, after I had made all the plans. I tried convincing him to tell his boss that he had plans, but Scott was adamant. My fellow Redditors, he did not agree to come back home. Even though I was upset with him, I asked him to just come back home so I could be then goodbye. I mean, he was going on a trip for two good weeks. I needed to see him before he went on that trip. He told me that it was not possible because they had a lot of work to do. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and go and visit him at work. He did not have a problem with it, but told me to be fast because there was every possibility that they would leave before I got to his workplace. I got ready very quickly and took a taxi to his workplace. When I got there, I realized that he had already left. Scott called me and told me that he left a few minutes before I came. I don't want to sound like a bitch, but I was really upset. It was one thing to cancel plans last minute, but it was also another thing to not make an effort. When I got back to the house that day, I was really upset. I canceled all my nail appointments because I wanted to be with Scott on Valentine's Day. I just couldn't understand how he could not make sacrifices when I made the sacrifices for him. I know my work is not as serious as his. He's a video developer while I'm just a nail tech. My job is more flexible than his, but at least I expected him to make an effort. I could not believe that I was spending my favorite holiday alone. I don't know if Valentine counts as a holiday, but to me it's a holiday. I had to cancel all the reservations I'd made. Some of the restaurants were not ready to give a refund, so I let it go. I mean, I had no other choice anyway. On Valentine's Day, I tried calling Scott, but it was not reachable. After trying for some time, I gave up. I no longer had a best friend I could rely on, so I decided to go to a club because I was bored. I was just tired of staying at home and I did not really like the fact that I was alone at home. I wanted to go to the club for one or two hours, get a couple of drinks and hear some loud music, lol. When I got to the club, I did not expect you to be so packed and full of people. I thought I would be the only one lonely on Valentine's Day, but it seemed like a lot of people came there to cool off. I just ordered some shots from the barman. I used to be a very big party animal before I met Scott. I've never really been one always used to staying at home for long periods of time. When Sarah was still my best friend, we would go to parties and clubs and just try your best to have fun after a stressful day at work. But since I no longer had a best friend and she seemed to have betrayed me, I decided to take matters into my own hands and club alone. I did not plan to dance or make new friends, I just wanted to drink and have a good time. I was not worried about getting drunk because I could handle my alcohol a lot. While I was taking one of my shots, a random guy came to sit beside me. I did not pay attention to him at first because I thought that he was also there to order drinks. But I noticed that he was not ordering any drink and was just sitting there looking at me. Of course, when I saw him just sitting there looking at me, I got very alert and asked him why he was just sitting there looking at me. Like all those flirty boys, I started using those pickup lines that they think are cool. Things like, you look like, you fell from the sky, you're beautiful and whatnot. I found that very cliche, so I asked him to get up and leave me alone. He did not seem to comply at first, but after I kept persisting, he gave in and left. 
My encounter with him made me very irritated. I did not expect to meet a pervert when all I came to the club to do was to have fun. I tried my best to forget my encounter with him and focused on drinking. I know how stupid that sounds, but I was overreacting that day. I was really angry that Scott bailed on me, so I felt like drinking was my way of coming down. It was acting childish and naive. I never really expected it to be the reason I would end up breaking up with Scott. I never even expected to break up with Scott at all. Literally everything that happened feels like a dream. But my fellow Redditors, it's reality. A reality that continuously hunts me till this day. While I was having my second round of shots, this guy just came and offered to buy me drinks. I told him I was not interested because I did not want to let a stranger buy me drinks. He said he was fine with that, but wanted to sit down with me. I told him he could sit down anywhere he wanted and that I did not own the club. As long as he did not disturb me, I was fine with him sitting down anywhere he wanted, and I made that clear to him. The guy sat down with me and ordered drinks for himself. We just sat there drinking in silence before he decided to talk. He asked for my name, but I ignored him. Like I said, I did not really go to the club with the intention of making any friends. So my dear Redditors, I tried my best to ignore the guy that was sitting next to me. Unlike the first guy, he seemed to be good at minding his business and did not disturb me a lot. Everything seems to be going fine, Reddit. That was until some time into our drinking marathon when he offered to dance with me. I politely declined and told him I was not interested in dancing with anyone. I also told him that I had a boyfriend. He said it was just for a few minutes and that there were no strings attached. I thought about it for a while and decided to give it a try. I have no malicious intentions in mind. I just wanted to dance a little since I'd been sitting in the club alone for a long time. He grabbed my hands and led me to the dance floor. We danced for a few minutes before I told him I was tired and wanted to rest. He kept following me like a leash and offered to find me a place to sit. I know what you all are thinking. Why didn't I just tell him to leave me alone? Well, if I knew what the night was going to end up in, I would have definitely told him to leave me alone, but I didn't know. I usually know how to handle my alcohol, so I was not scared of anyone taking advantage of me. I was also careful not to accept drinks or food from him even after he offered them to me. But sometime into the night, the guy became very touchy. He would put his hands on my lap or try to put his hands on my shoulder. At first, I told him to stop it, and then he would apologize and say he just got carried away. Sometimes he even told me not to read into things because he had a girlfriend. I found that very funny because I was not hitting on him. My fellow, really, I made it clear to him that I had a boyfriend, so I was not interested in him. I got irritated because he was trying to make it look like I was fighting with him, so I told him to get up and leave. He apologized for his behavior and said he was just joking. Some point during the party, I decided it was time to go home. I did not have as much fun as I really had in parties, but I knew that there was only limited fun I could have because I have a boyfriend. So, my fellow Redditors, I got up and left the party. The guy from the club followed me outside and asked me if I was about to leave. I got tired of him pestering me and told him that yes, I really wanted to leave. He offered to drive me home, but I declined. I know my fellow Redditors are wondering how everything suddenly went haywire. To be honest, I too don't even know how things suddenly went haywire. When I declined his request to drive me home, he offered to call a taxi for me. I also declined, and that was when he started making advances. He told me he was tired of beating around the bush and that he really liked me. I told him I had a boyfriend and he said he was not looking for a relationship. We started having a conversation from there and then he brought up the idea of me following him to his place. I refused and we started going back and forth. He told me it was Valentine's Day and I obviously came to the club alone, so we should go have fun just for the night. My fellow Redditors, I ended up accepting his request, but I refused to follow him to a place. He did not mind and we booked a hotel. I did not know what came over me or where I suddenly got the courage to do that from, but I certainly know that I was not drunk. I was in my right senses because I remembered everything. I don't know if I was trying to pay back Scott for bailing or me, or if I was just trying to act out. I don't know the reason and honestly, I don't understand why I did what I did. And that's what bothers me the most. The fact that I don't even know why I cheated on Scott makes me more disgusted with myself. I went to the hotel that night with a total stranger and cheated on my boyfriend. Maybe that's why I'm writing this on Reddit, 
I still can't believe that I was able to do that with a total stranger. When I woke up the next morning, I was utterly disappointed in myself. When I looked at the face of the man that was lying in bed next to me, and I realized that I didn't even know his name, I knew that I'd made a very big mistake. When I got back to the house, I spent the whole day crying because I knew that I had messed up. I used to look forward to Scott coming back, but that day I was not ready to face him at all. He still had to stay up to 10 days before he came back, and I knew that those 10 days were gonna be the worst 10 days of my life. I had to spend those days thinking about how I was gonna tell him the truth. Covering up everything and acting like nothing happened was not in the question for me. My conscience was too strong for me to lie in his face and act like I did not cheat on him. If those 10 days were the hardest days of my life, the day Scott actually came back has to be the most miserable day of my life. He brought his usual gifts and was smiling and very happy to see me. I would normally be more happy and jump on him and tell him how much I missed him. But on that particular day, I could not even look him in the eye. I could not wait for him to properly settle in before I told him the truth of what happened. I could not bear to see him smiling and genuinely telling him how much he kissed me. My conscience kept poking at me, so I told him the truth. I don't think I've ever seen Scott as angry as I saw him that day. He was very furious and he did not waste time before telling me how disappointed he was in me. He called me all sorts of names and told me how his whole family warned him about me. Yes, he really said that to me. I can't blame them though. I gave them a reason to be right. I ruined everything with that miserable mistake I made. Scott told me to leave his house immediately. It was not a surprise to me because I had already even packed my things. I knew that telling him the truth was going to end our relationship, but I preferred doing that than living a lie and constantly lying to his face. If he was in my position and he lied to me rather than telling me the truth, I would be very serious and I'd hate him all my life. I know that Scott hates me right now, and I know just how happy Sarah, Tara, and his mother must be. Scott told me that our relationship is over, and he even went as far as collecting all the gifts he bought for me back. I did not expect anything else, though. A cheater like me deserves nothing less. It's been a week now, and my life has literally turned upside down. I hope someone learned from my story and does not make the same mistake I made. I'm really emotional writing this, so I will end this post here. I think I'll be ready to write an update in three months. So stay tuned and bye for now, Reddit. Update. Hi guys, I know I said I'd be updating this post in three months time, but it's just been two months and I'm already here with an update. I know what I did to Scott was messed up and I still regret it till today. I still don't have any excuses and I take full responsibility for my actions. But what he did to me in these past two months has been ruthless and horrible. Do you remember my best friend, Sarah? The one that tried to seduce Scott? Well, guess what? Scott got together with Sarah and started dating her just two weeks after he broke up with me. Yes, you read that right. I don't want to sound like a bitch, but really? Sarah? Isn't it fishy that he went ahead to date someone that wanted to seduce him while we were dating? That just goes to show that there could have been something going on between both of them. That's the only way Sarah would have gotten the confidence to go to his room naked. I'm not saying I did not expect Scott to move on after what I did to him. I'm just saying that it's suspicious that he got together with a woman that made an attempt on him before. I expected him to get back with Tara or someone else, but that was a huge blow. Now I wonder if he even cheated on me before. Well, I guess the unnecessary sudden work trips are now suspicious. I made the mistake of cheating, and now he can boldly flaunt her in front of me. Well, I guess that's my karma for cheating with a total stranger. He decided to move on with my former best friend. My karma surely hit me harder than possible. Life's a lesson, and I've learned mine painfully well. Goodbye, Reddit.